Please welcome Will Storm. Hello. Okay, my story is called The Only Haunted Place in the World. <clears throat> the ghost of Notting Hill had frightened Leland away for so long that he'd almost been too scared to go back there and paste up all his posters. But two weeks ago, he just about managed to plaster 35 of them across the walls and lampposts of the haunted streets of Portobello, Westbourne Park and Ladbroke Grove. And now, here he was. The turnout for his, walking, for, the turnout for his very first walking tour was exactly four times better than he'd been expecting. Four people were waiting for him outside North Kensington Library. A middle-aged couple in matching Burkhouse fleeces an elderly lady dressed all in black, bar some bright orange Nike Airs, and a tall man with pentagon earrings, a billowing paisley scarf, and fingerless leather gloves. Leland couldn't remember the last time he'd had to speak to more than one person at once. At school, maybe. Certainly since he'd fled Notting Hill ten years ago, in an attempt to outrun the terror of his first broken heart, he'd never really spoken to anybody at all. He surveyed his group with a nervous smile, attempted to wet his lips with a dry tongue, and began. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, thank you for coming on my ghost tour of Notting Hill, the only haunted place in the world. <laughs> Welcome to the first location, which is one of the most spiritually damaged of all. This is the library in which I used to work 10 years ago. Inside, hush is required at all times. Therefore, I will do my talking now, then we will file through in strict silence, and I will point to the haunted location within. <laughs> the elderly lady grinned excitedly. The middle-aged couple cocked their heads with looks of studentish concentration, and the man with the leather gloves raised his chin, closed his eyes, and offered a mysterious smile. On the ground floor of North Kensington Library, the disturbances of the past are painfully strong, he said. For it is here that I first met Summer. It was a quiet Saturday morning and I was reorganising the hardbacks in the Psychology and Skills for Life section while Summer was needing help after getting stuck in the History section. She'd been trying to find books on the medieval craftsmen of Pottery Lane, which is up near Holland Park Road, and was only finding books on wars and politicians. Having asked for my assistance, I directed her to the local history section. And then, Leland swallowed. And then she smiled at me, and it felt like the first smile that I'd ever really seen. He coughed to cover the crack in his voice. And this is the first haunted place. Er, uh, said the middle-aged man, is there a charge for this tour? <laughs> it's free, said Leland, glancing quickly between him and his wife, and completely unique, and it doesn't take very long. There was a silence. Please, he said, come with me. And uh, will we see any ghosts, said his wife. Oh no, said Leland, walking towards the library. These are my ghosts, only I can see them. <laughs> As he walked up the familiar steps with his party of four filing behind him obediently, Leland felt suddenly lightheaded. His hand froze on the door. His knees felt all sparkly and numb. He looked over his shoulder, taking in the faces behind him, expectant, impatient, watching. Okay, he said, and he pushed. And there it was, the smell of the photocopier, the dashes of light reflecting off thousands of plastic-covered spines, and the counter at which he spent so many happy, virtually silent Saturdays. There was the fiction section, there was crime and thriller, there was psychology, and there it was, history, the section in which Summer had got stuck. He was back in the presence of the very carpet tiles, the very books, the very shelving that were actually there for his first meeting with Summer. Leland pointed to the spot that he'd recalled so often in his daydreams and, night, and, and in his night dreams, the place where it all began. Her presence was strong, just as, as, be, as he'd been expecting. Of all the ghosts that there were of his ex-girlfriend, the one at the library was always going to have been the one, of mo one of the most upsetting. She was perfectly beautiful in the history section, and still perfectly a stranger. Leland allowed himself another moment, just staring, the reassuring weight of his tour guests keeping him steady. Thanks, he muttered to the group when he was finished. They folded him back out in silence. Left on Lancaster Road and again on Portobello, he tried to ignore the increasingly harsh whispering that was going on between the middle-aged couple. <laughs> As he passed the pie and mash shop, the old lady in the Nikes caught up with him. After I lost my husband, I kept on seeing him for years, she said. I had to move out of our house in the end, all those memories. I couldn't move for them. 
Leland nodded and gathered the group around him, ready for the next stop on the tour. The middle-aged man stood at the back apart from his wife, his hands shoved into his pockets. So uh, this is Chic Freak, a designer boutique which I took Summer to to choose her present on her 20th birthday. I didn't trust myself to choose. As he was speaking, Leland was watching the man with a leather glove slowly raise his hand. She was very beautiful this summer, said the man. <laughs> Leland couldn't work out if this was a question or a statement of fact. Uh, yes, uh, yes she was. A anyhow, I, I didn't trust myself to... The man closed his eyes and allowed a beatific f a smile to levitate in his lips. She was about your uh, age, of average height, or perhaps a foot either side of it, and uh, spirits telling me that Summer was capable of great confidence, and yet was at her core a very sensitive young woman. Can you see her too? asked the middle-aged woman. Her husband tutted theatrically and glared at his walking boots. She's here with me now, said the man, but don't be alarmed. I'm a spiritualist medium. I can assure you, you are all entirely safe. Uh, sorry, would you mind listening, said Leland. Summer's not with you. She lives down the road in Stanley Crescent. He sniffed and stood upright and waited until he, sh he was sure he'd got their attention. Right, thank you. It was in Chic Freak that I bought Summer her first birthday present. I thought she would choose a dress or something, but she picked out a purple rubber basque made by House of Harlots. <laughs> oh yes, she had a wild streak, did Summer, said the spiritualist. He touched his earlobe with the tip of his finger. Oh, what's this? Spirit's telling me you had great trouble in your relationship. Leland didn't know what to do. He couldn't let his tour descend into chaos. They had the junk shop to get to yet, where he and Summer had unsuccessfully hunted for bargains for their first flat. Then there was the florist on the corner of Labrook Grove and Lancaster Road, where he proposed with a ring hidden inside the closed cup of a tulip. And then the place that he feared the most, and he had to get to. That bookshop cafe place with the plunger coffee and the savoury muffins, where she told him finally that it was over. He had to exercise that most horrific of, ghosts of the ghosts of summer, the one with the pale drawn face and the red eyes and those endless ghastly tears. Yeah, we did have great trouble, Leland said, but if I can have your attention, I'm not surprised you fell in love with her, he said. She was wonderful. I'm the only one who can see the ghosts of summer, said Leland. The medium drew his smile in. I have a special relationship with the dead, he said. They surround me. But she's not dead, said Leland. The medium shook his head and gave a superior smile. Those who have passed are still capable of great love, he said. <laughs> Leland felt the rage as if, it, as if it was a match spilled on pet... Uh, Leland felt the rage as if it was a match on spilled petrol. She's not fucking dead! <laughs> he took a step towards the medium, his cheeks hot and his eyes cold. And then the old woman grabbed his wrist. wrist. Oh, but you poor darling, she is dead, she said. The person that you obviously love so much doesn't exist anymore. But that's okay, because it means you've got her now. She's all yours. So you just keep her there, tucked up in your memories. You'll be able to keep her just where you want her safely stuck in history. Will Storr.